Assalamu alaikum. I first of all I want to thanks TDRA for providing me the opportunity for delivering this session, and also I welcome all the participants. First of all, I want to introduce you with myself. My name is Sari Khan. I am a professional trainer. I have more than 14 years of professional experience in diversified uh, fields and organizations like uh, information technology, information security, cybersecurity, networks, telecommunication. I have done uh, MS in telecommunication and networks. I have done BS in computer science. I'm a certified EC course instructor. I have done CHV11. I have done CCNA cyber ops, CCNA, ITL V3, IBM cybersecurity uh, analyst uh, training and certification. Then I have also done IBM AI essentials. OK, uh, the expected outcome of this uh, course, which is uh, how to how we will build in uh, AI solutions. Yeah, OK. So uh, we have the following expected accomplishments. First of all, is in, uh, we have to introduce to computer programming and Python programming language. Then we will learn about artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning. Then we will learn about self-driving cars, okay, how they are uh, made, the com their com its components, and how AI interacts in this process. Then we will learn about the tools that can be used online to directly write AI algorithms using Python. Then uh, we will learn about the basic syntax of Python, and then artificial uh, of artificial intelligence. And then uh, we'll see uh, how we can make uh, AI application using Python. Uh, we have uh, this table of contents, like first is introduction to artificial intelligence, then we'll learn about AI, ML, and deep learning. Then uh, we'll go through AI for self-driving cars. Then we will go through programming languages and uh, the Python language. The Python, why, then we'll discuss why the uh, Python is the best programming language for AI uh, considered uh, as a best uh, programming language for AI. Then we will discuss the online tools that uh, uh, by using those tools, we can uh, write AI algorithms in Python. Then we will discuss about the basic Python syntax for artificial intelligence. And then we will discuss about the Python uh, AI applications. Then last session will be our questions answer session. Okay, first of all, introduction to AI. Basically, artificial intelligence uh, is the science of engineering of making the intelligent machines. Uh, we can say that uh, by inducing the human intelligence in some extent to machines so that they will become intelligent. So. Uh, and also they act and uh, 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 react like a, uh, humans. So artificial intelligence is the simulation of human intelligence process by machines, especially computer systems. So specific application of AI include expert systems like uh, natural language processing, speech recognition, and machine vision. Then we, uh, there are, we discussed there are, uh, you know, uh, three types of basically uh, artificial intelligence. One is called, which uh, is the current artificial intelligence and implemented, is called artificial narrow intelligence. That is uh, basically uh, in this artificial intelligence, uh, the machine learns, okay, and the specific uh, area in a specific area, and it is applied in a specific area. For example, in Siri, Alexa, Cortana, and self driving cars. Then we have uh, artificial uh, general intelligence uh, that is a uh, machine intelligence, it refers to a computer that is as smart as, an, uh, as a human across the board. Uh, this is also, you know, uh, in process, but we have not achieved such a computer yet that can. Uh, as smart as human, human. Then we have artificial super intelligence. This is basically machine conscious 
artificial intelligence an intellect that is much smarter than the best human brains in practically in every field that is theoretical that has to be achieved then we will discuss about ai machine learning and deep learning now artificial intelligence is the concept of creating smart intelligence machines which mimic human behaviors then uh, machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence that helps you build ai driven applications and then uh, we have a deep learning that is a subset of machine learning that uses vast volumes of data and complex algorithms to train a model okay then there are other applications of ai as well for example finding the optimal path using the gps and the uh, and the graphs okay so that uh, uh, the car will find the optimal uh, way towards the destination and here as we see the conv convolutional ne neural network which is basically uh, the uh, artificial intelligence uh, network okay which is mainly uh, basically used for computer vision and uh, it's address the pixels uh, analyzing the pixels and make based on the uh, vision make the decisions but in ai navigation uh, gps technology and graph neural uh, this uh, convolution neural network is used for uh, finding the optimal path. Then we have AI in uh, robotics. Like here, you see the robot Sophia, which is uh, one of the robot which has been given the nationality of Kingdom of Saudi Arabia because of uh, you know its uh, uh, interaction with the humans and uh, its. Uh, feedback towards the humans and responses uh, these are human robots it looks like humans and uh, uh, is their body structures are made like uh, that that they are uh, looking like humans and uh, also interact with the humans uh, and uh, by giving the uh, different uh, replies like gestures okay and these are the robots which are uh, working in uh, different industries like here uh, these robots are working in a departmental store and arranging the things uh, in a different drawers then we have AI yeah, in human resource uh, which is helping for reinventing onboarding process reshaping hiring process revamp training process analyze understand employee problems revitalize performance analysis then we have AI in healthcare, which is uh, helping the doctors and and, and also uh, also helps in the uh, medicines medicine prescriptions and also help in uh, during the uh, as different types of operations and also uh, analyze the disease and uh, and and uh, suggests about the disease and the prescription then we have ai in agriculture like uh, uh, ai can be used for livestock management for weather forecasting field condition management soil health and for water management also ai is used can be used for crop management monitoring crops disease detection water control and the handling the labor shortage agricultural uh, chatbots then we have ai in gaming uh, uh, is used uh, like npcs are used uh, non playing characters the the characters uh, in an ai for example there is a war game and there is a, a character uh, which is a soldier and it can interact with the other soldiers by itself learning itself and it is not controlled by any human player then uh, we have AI in automobiles, like self-driving cars, having different sensors yeah, and uh, using the artificial intelligence and uh, analyzing the obstacles on the way, on the road, and avoid those obstacles and drive the car safe in, in a safe manner. 
Then we have uh, AI in social media. We have different types of applications like Twitter, Facebook, uh, Skype, YouTube. Okay, lot of applications which are using the AI, and uh, we are experiencing these uh, in our daily life. Then we have. Uh, now I will show you. Uh, demonstration uh, on uh, okay uh, on a self driving car okay let me Experimental self-driving vehicles are taking to our streets, skies, and seas, powered by artificial intelligence. They might transport you around cities, grow your food, or deliver packages to your doorstep. They could reveal hidden glimpses of the world around you, and even save lives. They are designed to outperform humans at specialized tasks in very specific environments. But they are not quite ready to take full control. Training their AI to interact safely with us in our complex and unpredictable world is still a significant challenge. Deciding how and whether they should be used is another. Self-driving vehicles use sensors and artificial intelligence, or AI, AI is what enables self-driving vehicles to react in unpredictable situations. This is an early example of British self-driving technology. The car was modified by the Road Research Laboratory, which added an experimental automatic steering system. The experiments were carried out on a specially adapted test track. When the automatic steering mode was engaged, the driver could take their hands off the wheel. This car was a prototype and was never commercially produced. At the time, researchers estimated such systems could allow 50% more cars to drive on the roads, while reducing accident rates. Today, pods are being used to help carry passengers through airports and car parks. This is an example that researchers are testing in Greenwich, where it could soon take visitors on a scenic journey around the peninsula. Quiet and fully electric, it's meant to operate in public spaces alongside pedestrians, cyclists, and animals. Self-driving technology is being developed for many types of land vehicles, from cars and trucks to military supply vehicles and robots that make deliveries and farm crops. Tom is the first prototype developed by the small robot company. It can decide what route to take around a field, photograph crops, and tag their position on a map. It works alongside Dick and Harry, which pull weeds and water the crops. This data is sent to an artificial intelligence-driven control system called Wilma. Technology developers argue self-driving vehicles could make journeys faster, safer, and more sustainable. But some environments, such as busy cities, are highly unpredictable and would need significant modifications to enable self-driving technology. Your behavior might have to change too. Okay, now you have uh, seen the video of on self-driving cars. Now we will discuss about uh, the parts of self-driving cars. Okay. Uh, right here uh, we have the software part and the hardware uh, inter infrastructure. In software part, we have uh, different uh, applications running which are used for making decisions based on the inputs received from the sensors. And uh, then we have the application interface uh, programs, uh, which uh, interface is with the application with the uh, different uh, uh, hardware. Okay, then we have a 
compute and network processes all data from the uh, that compute all the data from the sensors make senses of digital signals connectivity layers of the car also interfaces with the sensor fusion and maps then we have a like cpu gpu or user here and then infrastructure uh, the underlying physical and organizational unit of the stack like a cloud and edge mostly nowadays edge is used at the uh, with the end uh, iot device like uh, end uh, sensor okay and uh, all uh, the computing is done at the uh, end sites not it, it is not sent to the central processor or central uh, server for processing and analyzing and making the decision it, uh, this will compute uh, the edge device will compute uh, the uh, based on the data uh, and uh, uh, send the uh, alerts uh, to the uh, main application so that uh, the action can be taken. Then we have these, uh, as you know, in hardware, we have the sensors sensing the vehicle environment like LIDAR, sonar, ECS, camera, radar, others. We will discuss in next, uh, these uh, sensor in next uh, slide. Okay, and this is basically a typical structure of a, a self-driving car. We have different sensors over here. For example, for example, radar. Radar is, uh, you know, it is uh, placed on, uh, uh, fitted on the top of the roof of a car. For example, here, uh, radar is a rotating laser scanner generates a precise 3D map of the surroundings. Okay, so that uh, the car uh, should be alert of uh, what is going on the. Uh, surrounding. Then there is a front camera to detect the traffic lights and many any moving objects on the road. Okay. Then we have a radar to maintain the fixed distance from a cars ahead. These, these are the front radars. Then we have a GPS receiver to get the car position from the satellites along with the internal motion sensors can determine the exact position. Then we have a, a rear radar uh, for the cars which are coming from the back. So to, so to to maintain the distance. Uh, then we have the wheel encoders for speed control. Then uh, we have a central computer to control the car using specific algorithms can make all the driving scenes. And that algorithms basically are uh, using uh, maybe the Python mostly, yeah, Python for uh, analyzing because uh, the computer vision uh, camera is used and the computer uh, vision and, uh, and all the uh, videos are sent to the central computer, which uh, contains algorithms like uh, uh, Python algorithms, like neural network, deep learning uh, algorithms that can uh, analyze and uh, based on the features of uh, the received video and then make the decision. And then and we have an easy uh, accessible mechanism to engage the this in, engage the autonomous technology. Okay, now these are the components. Then, uh, then I already told you that uh, Python programming is mainly used uh, for uh, uh, analyzing and making the decision along with the C language. C. And then we have, uh, now we'll discuss about the machine learning. Yeah. Machine learning is a, has a subset of artificial intelligence and we are using different algorithms in machine learning uh, for uh, the input data uh, so, uh, so that the uh, machine algorithm will make a decision based on the input data. And machine learning is a branch of artificial intelligence and computer science which focuses on the use of data and algorithms. Okay. And then uh, machine learning algorithms use historical data as input to uh, predict new output values. It, uh, we feed the data uh, to the machine. Okay. And uh, with the labels, or uh, maybe it's a structure on structure label or without label, then machine uh, will detect the, and analyze the features of previous feeded data, so that uh, whenever the new input will uh, be received by the machine, it will uh, then uh, uh, based on the training machine, it will build the data, and when you feed the new input, it will make the prediction, and, and, uh, and that is called predicting out outcome. Then we have how uh, we will see how machine learning works. Okay. Uh, as uh, for example, here, uh, uh, if you discuss about the uh, uh, previous uh, or the traditional algorithms or the programs, they only have the uh, some set of rules. They only 
uh, they, they are strict to the rules only. They are not learning uh, from, from the uh, previous data. For example, here we are uh, feeding different pictures of the animals uh, to this uh, uh, traditional system. Okay, then it, uh, uh, it have the, all the uh, feeded data. Then we will uh, 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 feed a new picture of our animal. Then it will only compare that picture to the features of the uh, pure, previous uh, pictures of animals. Then it uh, you know totally resembles. Then it will uh, make the decision whether it is a dog, bird, cat, or uh, fish. But in uh, uh, machine learning model the first of all we train the model we feed the data to the model specified data for example uh, the traffic uh, uh, data or the any uh, any any of the specified data uh, for example here we are feeding the data of animals we can feed the data of humans as well so when you're feeding the data of animals to this model and then we also provide the uh, the labels uh, whether the uh, specific uh, picture is of uh, which animal, for example, is a picture of cat, dog, uh, or any, any other animals. Then uh, uh, when we feed the uh, test data, for example, a new picture which is not resembled to uh, the previous uh, pictures, uh, for example, then this uh, neural network, uh, sorry, this uh, machine learning model will predict based on the previous features uh, and, and analyze and compare and then it make the decision whether it's dog, bird, cat and, or fish. So we are diff using different algorithms for, uh, according to uh, the requirement. Uh, example of uh, machine learning is uh, Netflix and Amazon recommended uh, it's recommended the videos okay uh, based on the uh, interests of a uh, uh, so, uh, the users. Then we have, uh, you know, uh, the banks, how banks make uh, the decision when approving a loan application. This is uh, basically loan application. They, uh, the machine learning algorithm will check uh, about the probability of a default for each applicant. And then uh, the uh, approve or refuse the loan application based on the probability. Then we have, uh, you know, about uh, telecommunication companies, which uh, basically uh, uh, companies use uh, customer dem demographic data to segment them or predict if they will unsubscribe from their company in the next month, whether they are uh, happy or not, whether they are satisfied for the company services or not. So we can uh, predict by using the machine learning whether the customer uh, are going or the, the customer will decrease the incoming uh, period of time then uh, there are different types of basically uh, machine learning basically there are two types of uh, machine learning supervised learning and unsupervised learning in supervised learning we are as already we have discussed okay uh, that uh, we are training the model by inputting or feeding the data having and we are so providing the label as well so uh, whenever then uh, when uh, the model is trained and when we feed the new data then it's, uh, the system automatically predicts by and then make the analysis and uh, check the features of the previous feeded data then it will predict whether the for example here the new picture will be apple or some other food uh, you know and then we have unsupervised learning in unsupervised learning uh, that model will Make the decision based on uh, based on the unlabeled data. We are we will feed the huge amount of data to the model. Then model will extract the features of the data. And then, for example, when we in feed the new data or test data, then it will make the prediction based on the features. We are not uh, providing the label uh, to this model. It will. Uh, this model will learn itself and then we make the predictions about uh, the result. Then basically there are three main categories of problems, regression, classification, clustering. In regression, 
we are using supervised learning or uh, then output is a continuous quantity and the main aim is forecast or predict in a regression okay these are the three main categories of uh, problems in machine learning and then uh, for example in regression we predict stock market price algorithm linear regression for in uh, then we have a classification in classification we have a supervised learning output is a categorical quantity main aim is to compute the category of the data example is classify email as a spam spam or not spam uh, then algorithms used is logistic regression and then we have a clustering which is unsupervised learning we assign the data points into clusters uh, and then main aim is to group similar item uh, you know clusters uh, then it will uh, you know this uh, clustering mechanism or uh, this category of machine learning uh, will get the uh, will make the group similar similar item uh, group of similar items then th there is called clusters example find all transaction which are in a fraudulent in a bank uh, then uh, we can use the algorithms of machine learning which is called k means for this then uh, deep learning basically deep learning uh, is a type of machine learning and uh, it intimates the way humans gain certain types of knowledge deep learning is an important element of data science which includes statistics and predictive modeling deep learning utilizes both structured and unstructured data for training practically deep learning are virtual uh, for example uh, practical examples of uh, this uh, deep learning is all virtual assistance vision or driverless cars money laundering and face recognition Deep learning is a part of broader family of machine learning methods based on artificial neural networks with the uh, representation uh, learning. For example, here we have this uh, learning model, machine learning model. Okay, we have discussed before that we are providing the label to the model and, also, and uh, with the feeder data. Then uh, the, uh, this model will predict the for the new input, whether it is, for example, here, uh, is a car or not a car and and here for example we are feeding the data of the cars in deep learning then we are not training the data with the labels it will make its own decision making based on the uh, features and it will classify and then it will predict the output for example here we are feeding the tweets to the system and this uh, uh, for example artificial neural network will make the decision, uh, so a of example of deep learning, make the decision based on the feature of the already uh, fitted data, which is a huge amount of data, then it will classify whether it is, uh, for example, in our case, it is a tweet, then it will classify whether it is a polite offense, uh, a polite feed or a offensive feed. Okay, now we'll discuss about the neural network. First of all, we have to discuss about the uh, any uh, you know uh, living uh, being a neural network. Network, for example, here uh, we will discuss about the neuron of a pigeon, uh, which was drawn by Santiago Raymond in 1899, uh, and placing the pigeon's brain under a microscope, and then we, he will uh, he has an, uh, had analyzed the uh, neuron. Here, for example, this, these are only two neuro neurons. Here we have a lot of uh, neurons, large number of neurons. So it, it seems like uh, this, uh, as we seen in the picture. Now we'll uh, discuss about the components of these neurons. We have, for example, uh, here uh, this is a, as we discussed, this is a, a, a neuron of a, a pigeon. We, in this neuron, in one single neuron, uh, there is a part which is called soma. This is a nucleus. This is a brain of a neuron. Okay, it uh, all the decisions are made in this soma. Okay, and uh, this soma will get the input from the dendrites. Okay, and then this the output of this nucleus will be sent through the axon and then this uh, there's a terminal button called snaps this is connected to the 
other neuron. So output of this neuron will become the input of the other neuron. So in this way, uh, you know, the neuron uh, uh, produces the uh, outputs and taking the by taking the inputs. So uh, you know, there are uh, large number of neurons which are used for making the decision. So now we'll discuss about the artificial neuron. Uh, we have uh, this, for example, same similar structure. We have adenoids, we have soma, then we have exon. So soma is a nucleus, exon basically contains the output of a uh, neuron, and then adenoids contains the input of the neuron. So here, uh, this is a typical structure of artificial neuron. We have input layer, we have hidden layer, and then we have a output layer. And the neurons are present in input, uh, hidden layer, and on the output layer. So there are three main topics associated with the artificial neural networks. One is the forward propagation, back, uh, back propagation, and then activation, activation functions. First of all, forward propagation. Here in the uh, artificial neural network, uh, one neuron will receive the input value from different input values from other uh, neurons. And this value, there in this example, for example, it is a x1, x2. And uh, this value has the weight. Okay, these are the mathematical calculations. So we can find, uh, you know, all the uh, built-in libraries. <coughs> uh, for example, in Python, for uh, uh, using this different type of uh, algorithms. So we don't have to worry about that. Just we have to understand the basic concept. So we will also, uh, you know, putting some bias value for tuning our output. So the weight uh, input value of uh, the one, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, uh, of the uh, other neuron, which is the output. Uh, this is input one first input. We will multiply this x one to w is weight, and then we add uh, with the other input. Okay, and the other input is also multiplied with the uh, its weight, and then we also add the. Uh, bias value and then that will then they will uh, have the output value that output value become the uh, input value of the other neuron so here and we use the uh, you know we for using this in neural network we have to use a sigmoid function from here for example this is a sigmoid function which are used uh, you know to converting the output into the uh, understandable form of a machine for, for algorithm uh, or for neural network. So here uh, we see that one input, uh, this uh, a neuron is receiving the input and then it is producing the output and this, this output will become the input of the other neuron. So in this way, uh, you know, the new, uh, neural network works. So then we have a back propagation. For example, the output value is not the desired value then these output will again, you know, uh, uh, tuned, okay, uh, by using the back propagation algorithm. Okay, so complete training of algorithm is as, first of all, you know, in, uh, algorithm initializes the weights and the biases, then there are iteratively, uh, there are iterations for calculating network output using forward propagation, calculate error between uh, the ground truth and estimated or predicted output, then we have updated various and biases through propagation. Then we the, the, then the repeat the above three steps until number of iteration uh, if, uh, is reached or error between the ground truth and predicted output is below a predefined threshold. So, okay, now we'll, uh, you know, these are the algorithms. Now, how we can use algorithms by using the programming language. So first of all, we know what is the programming language. The programming language is a set of symbols, grammars, syntax, of symbols. These are the different symbols like uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, percentage, and assigning operator. These, these are all the, the symbols. Okay. Then we have the meaning. We use these symbols in our programming language. Then we have the grammar. Basically, a programming language grammar is a set of instructions about how to write statements that are valid for the programming language. Uh, the sections are given in the form of rules that specify how characters and the words can be put 
uh, one after the other to form valid statements, so-called sentences. For example, he here we have a simple uh, structure of a program. This is a conditional statement. Whether this can, when the, this condition will become true, then the other statement will be executed. Then we have this, uh, have a curly braces. Okay, and this statement is, uh, uh, is under this conditional statement. This curly braces are the part of this conditional statement. Then we have, uh, for example, this, uh, uh, this, in this simple program, uh, we are testing one condition. When it is true, then the state, this statement will be executed. Then if uh, not true, then this, uh, the last uh, statement two will be executed. So this is basically the grammar, which is used uh, in the uh, programming language. As you know, we are using the grammar in our, our daily life, like for example, we have a language, uh, we have our uh, native language, like for example, we have a English language, we are we have to follow the grammar so that, uh, you know, the structure will be made so so that we will uh, uh, make the other people understand what are we what we are saying and what we uh, uh, what, what is our purpose of, uh, you know, uh, what is our purpose of uh, discussion and so on. So then we have a syntax. Definition of syntax is that refers to rules that define the structure of our language. Syntax in computer programming means the rules that uh, control the structure of the symbols, punctuations, and words of programming language. Without syntax, the meaning of or syntax of a language is nearly impossible to understand. For example, we have this sentence, uh, subject or need and does sentence above. You cannot understand from this uh, sentence what is the meaning. And then, uh, okay, has a little meaning. You cannot understand. So we have to make it uh, in a proper syntax. For example, does, now we have the correct syntax. Does a sentence need a subject and verb? So now it is understandable. That basically algorithms translates into programs. Okay, the algorithms are the general structure of, okay, uh, logical uh, steps. So those logical steps will be uh, then uh, transferred into programming some programming language like Python. Then it uh, these programs are executed on a computer to for the desired output. Now we will we have to discuss uh, the difference between the interpreter and compiler. These are the uh, two uh, programs, different type of programs, okay, which are used by the different programming languages. Whether these languages are script languages or other programming languages. Uh, and uh, uh, for executing the code, for the desired output. Now we'll discuss about the interpreter and compiler. Interpreter basically this is a translate program one statement at a time. And then uh, compiler scans the entire program. For example, we are written, writing a program uh, in a programming language. Then we have to execute it. So and also check whether uh, we have any uh, errors in the program, then we need one of uh, these, either we have to use interpreter or a compiler for a programming language. Okay. This is also a program. Okay. We have the interface. For example, we have different, uh, you know, uh, 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 programs uh, like in Python, we have used ID of uh, program for running and ID control the interp is a interpreter. And uh, then the C programming language contains the compiler to compile the uh, program uh, to for the successful execution and for knowing the errors, okay. Then uh, interpreter takes less amount of time to analyze the source code, but the overall execution time is slower. But uh, compiler takes large amount of time to analyze the source code, but uh, uh, the overall execution time is comparatively fast as, as compared to interpreter. No intermediate object code is generated in interpreter when you're using the interpreter languages or interpreter. Hence the memory are more efficient. Uh, compiler generates intermediate object code with further requires linking, we, uh, hence requires more memory. So then we have a continuous translating, this interpreter continues, translates the program until the first error is met, in which case it stops, hence debugging is easy. But in the compiler, it generates the error message only after scanning the whole program. Hence the debugging is uh, comparatively hard. Programming language like Perl Ruby uses interpreter. And the programming language uh, also uh, mentioned here, the main, uh, you know, uh, Python, uh, the language which we use here is uh, Pythonism. I use the interpreter. The programming language like C, C++ use compilers. So 
no programming languages are complex and tedious to learn where the scripting languages are easier to learn write the master write the master as compared to programming languages basically all scripting languages are programming languages the theoretical difference between the two is the scripting language do not require the compilation step or the rather the interpreted generally compiled programs run faster than the interpreted programs because they are first converted net to native machine code uh, now we'll discuss about the c and c++ c++ was built as an extension of c which means it can run most of code it is object oriented okay so and uh, then HTML and HTTP, HTML is a language while HTTP is a protocol. HTML tags are used to help render web pages as well in the browser. On the contrary, HTTP transfer, uh, hypertext transfer protocol is a protocol for the transferring the hypertext pages from web browser to web browser, web server to web browser. Java and JavaScript. Java creates applications that run in a critical, in a virtual machine or a browser with JavaScript code is run on a browser only. Java code needs to be compiled while JavaScript code all are all in a text. Okay, Java is used a wide range of places, including Android apps, credit cards, programs, and so on. By comparison, JavaScript is mainly used to make web pages more interactive. These are some, you know, overview of our uh, programming languages. Then we have SQL uh, language. SQL stands for Structured Query Language, a standard language for assessing and manipulating databases. Then Python. Python is a very uh, uh, Powerful language for artificial intelligence. Python has simple syntax similar to the English language. It's very easy to learn. Python has a syntax that allows developers to write programs with a few lines that some other programs languages. Python runs on an interpreter system, meaning that the code can be executed as soon as it is written. This means that prototyping can be very quick. Now, for example, this is a structure of a Python. We have uh, the, this number A and B then we can print these numbers by using this print function. Then we can use the condition statement whether a b is greater than a, then print this one. Then a is equal to, we are assigning the uh, values to the variables, okay? And then we are also adding, and this, this is a basically syntax of, uh, you know, uh, of a, a Python language. And this is the program, you know, uh, some uh, is an example of a programming in Python. Okay. So uh, this is the output of uh, basically this uh, program oh we have also uh, another program is here okay we are ma ma making the comparison between the numbers and we are uh, want to get the higher number which is the in highest value so this is the program and simple steps okay we are using the print statement we're using the for loop and then we're using the condition statements and then we are comparing and then uh, uh, saving the number and then uh, uh, and taking the then, then this program will give us the output as a, a highest number uh, in value. Okay. Then uh, why Python uh, is considered the best programming language uh, for AI? Uh, AI and machine uh, learning projects uh, uh, very significant. The significant difference is because of the stack technology. This is a demand of deep research in uh, every step. Uh, Python AI projects are taking over the world because of their flexibility. According to the geology research. AI companies use this technical information to boost productivity. So uh, programming languages can be helpful. Leaders across the industry rely on the Python itself. Like IBM Fancius uh, project also uh, believes Python to be the best programming language. Simple, uh, why it is simple and consistent. Python provides the benefit for, for reasonable code. AI and machine learning requires solving complex algorithms. However, the simplicity of Python will ensure that developers can easily write the codes. And these are the basically the benefits which are elevated because it's a simple and consistent. So next is a better library ecosystem. It has a you know, large number of uh, you know, uh, library and uh, uh, supported by the community. And uh, people are writing different uh, modules and libraries. Uh, you know, and we have a lot of uh, uh, modules available for different uh, uh, purposes, like uh, in machine learning, uh, and uh, we can use different type of uh, modules like uh, libraries like NumPy, Pandas. These are used in artificial intelligence for calculation purposes. Then we have the uh, Matplotlib that is used for plotting the graphs. Okay, then we have statistics, and then machine learning. Uh, TensorFlow is used there, and uh, 
Scikit-learn is there. Then Kera library is there. These are the ways are used uh, in a uh, machine learning or AI projects. So uh, we have a large number of uh, libraries which are available uh, or are already built or libraries are available for uh, developing our projects. Then it's a flexible, it, it contains a OOP project, uh, object oriented uh, 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 and then this is furthermore you can consider recompiling the source code to buy, uh, bring any changes. Then Python is flexible platform. Uh, you, know, you can use in any play, uh, operating system. Uh, then uh, it is used for better visualization. Okay, it has a libraries for visualization. Then we have programming language has a bounty of built-in libraries and will use perhaps more than other languages like uh, already we discussed TensorFlow, Sky, uh, Scikit-Learn, PyLearn to NumPy, SciPy. Okay, and like the TensorFlow high level Python based neural network and deep learning library. Scikit uh, learn a Python based library for machine learning, data mining and data analysis. Uh, then PyLearn to Python based library, which is more flexible than Sky, uh, Scikit learn. The NumPy method used library for data science, scientific computing and multi-dimensional array. Then we have a Sci, uh, SciPy, a Python based library considered the first choice for the mathematics. Why we are discussing this? Because uh, uh, later on, we, I'll uh, let you know that how to uh, make the uh, machine learning uh, algorithms up, up again, okay? And we can use um, a different uh, machine uh, AI projects by using uh, this uh, flexible and powerful Python language. Okay. Then uh, it's easy to implement, okay? And then uh, we have, uh, that, uh, for example, we have, uh, you know, Python qualify for open CV, mean open computer vision, okay? Mostly, uh, uh, you know, uh, this, Python libraries are used for that. Python has a, uh, you know, uh, uh, as I've discussed, a large number of libraries. So when then we have our tutorial and resource available to, for learning this uh, Python uh, language. Then Python, we have the different tools. Okay, uh, we can use those tools, Python data tools for analyzing the data. Then we have a large developer community. Uh, okay, that supports. Uh, 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 the for any problem and the solutions and uh, write the uh, Python libraries uh, day by day. Then we have operating, this uh, operating system platform independence. There's no requirement, only you have to uh, you know, install the uh, interpreter and then you can run the, uh, your program. Then conclusion is that this, uh, conclusion for collecting Python for AI application planning as Python has great ability of, for AI and machine learning development. It has many unique features that really are seen together on the other program language. From its intuitive syntax, the basic control flow uh, down to its uh, structure, support, and libraries. Python enhance down the best uh, language for portrait writing AI algorithms. Okay, more about Python includes everything AI engineers can imagine. So we have lo a lot of uh, you know uh, application for Py of Python. For example, Python online tools okay, that uh, by using which we can uh, write in the uh, we can write the AI algorithms. There are skills network labs. We can use this online platform for writing our AI algorithm. Then we have AWS Cloud Nine for Python. Okay, this is also the online platform on, uh, by using which we can use the AI algorithms. Then we have Visual Studio uh, Code Spaces. Okay, by, uh, by Microsoft. We can use this online platform uh, for using the for writing our AI algorithms. Then uh, Python syntax. First of all, data set. Data set is any collection of data. It can uh, be anything from an array uh, to complete databases. Okay, for example, here we have a data uh, set okay, of an array. And here we have an example of database. Okay, uh, We have different uh, you know, uh, attributes and their values. Then we have data types. We have numerical data types, then we have categorical Okay, then we have or, uh, ordinal data, okay. And then the numerical, we have discrete data, for example, numbers and continuous data, uh, the, the numbers that are in of infinite value, categorical data are values that can be measured up against each other, okay. Like color value and uh, uh, any yes or no. Then we have uh, the ordinal, for example, school grades, where A is better than B and so on. So first of all, we have to know about the basics of, you know, for, uh, um, for making the project, we have to uh, know the basics of mathematics. Okay. 
like mean, the average value, the midpoint value, uh, median is the midpoint value, and then we have more, the most common value uh, in a, uh, for example, in, a, in an array. Okay. Uh, so this is the examples of what is the average, the middle, the most common speed. So we can use the NumPy uh, module library for calculating this. We know, don't need to build our own functions, uh, create our own functions, or write our own functions for, uh, for calculating this, uh, you know, a mean mode or uh, uh, medium. We can use a NumPy, okay? And the, the, we can use a function of this library, uh, like mean and mode and so on. Or median, okay? Median is basically the value in the middle after you have slotted, sorted all the values. And we can use this uh, NumPy uh, function, as I already told you. We can use the function of a NumPy library, okay, for calculating this median. Then we have a mode. We can calculate the mode by using this uh, uh, scipy library. And we import a stats function. And uh, using the stat function, in this way, we can calculate the uh, speed. OK. For example, we are uh, concluding the basically uh, speed of, uh, uh, you know, uh, in the, of this set, uh, data set. For example, we are using the mode, sorry, more, we are calculating the mode of the, these speed values of a cars. Then we have. Standard deviation. It is a number that decides how spread out the values are, and we can use. And this is the basically formula of the uh, calculating the standard deviation. Okay, so we can use the NumPy library for uh, for uh, finding out the standard deviation. So we don't need to uh, make your own uh, functions uh, and, and the programming steps for. Uh, calculating this, the standard deviation. These are the basically mathematical uh, values which we have to uh, we have to uh, know how to calculate. Like variance, variance is another number that indicates how spread out values are. Okay, so you can use this uh, uh, same NumPy uh, module and to calculate this variance. And we have a percentile. Versailles are used in statistics to give you a number that describes the value that give a percent of the values. Okay, we can use a function numpy for this calculating this by giving the uh, you know the value areas and then 90. Uh, you know, we are checking the percentile of giving the specific values. Then we have a data distribution. Okay, we can use a, a random function to generate the data. Uh, uh, now we use the uh, this function of uh, numpy library. Then we, okay, now, and then uh, we can plot this uh, data by using the mat, uh, matplotlib of uh, NumPy library. Then we uh, have, for example, regression. The term regression is used to when you are trying to find the relationship between the variables. Okay, uh, so we have the input value, then we want to find the output value. And then we can uh, uh, have to draw a line between uh, the data set. So we can use uh this uh, uh, library uh of uh sci sci pi you know a pattern library sci pi uh, and then we use a stat function and we use a matplotlib for plotting the uh the data set data set. and then we have uh, we have to know the r for relationship it is important to know how the relationship between the values of the x axis and the values of the y axis if there are no relation, the linear regression cannot be used uh, to predict anything. So you can use this uh, R value as here, okay? And we use the uh, modules of the Python, okay? We can find out this R relationship value as well, okay? Uh, whether this uh, value is, uh, you know, uh, appropriate or not. And we can predict the future values, okay? We can uh, define the functions like uh, here, we can define the function. And then we calculate the slope value and the other values. And then this uh, way, we can using the module of SciPy and to get the uh, of pred uh, our predicted values. Like here, we, we, are, we are predicting the values, OK? And we can get the value of 85.6. Uh, and these are the x-axis and y-axis values. And there will be a bad fit. Okay, for example, here we have the two arrays 
and when we are computing the value or relation value then it is it come up 0.03 it is it is a low okay and you can uh, uh, check this bad fit uh, in the by using the python program by using the python module then we can scale the features features when you a data has different values and even a different measurement you know it can be difficult to compare them okay So here, yeah, we can use a scale feature as well. Then we, we can use, uh, we can train and evaluate our uh, data set by using these uh, different steps, okay. And then we have, uh, you know, the, the application of artificial intelligence, like you can uh, make a fake review detector. Then we can uh, make the handwriting recognizer. Uh, then we can uh, make a spam identifier and traffic analyzer then opinion mining for website because we have a lot of modules available and we can use then game automators okay like here and uh, okay we uh, in this course we have learned about artificial intelligence machine learning deep learning ai used in self driving cars and components of self driving cars programming and python programming python importance for ai tools that can be used online to directly write ai algorithms using python python syntax for artificial intelligence python ai projects for learners these are oh uh, okay now we discuss if now we have a question answer session, you can ask the questions as well. Okay, uh, as uh, during the presentation, I have not uh, received the questions. So, I uh, guess. Okay, so uh, we can use, uh, uh, at the end, now I want to wrap it, uh, uh, we can use the Python programming uh, for making the AI uh, projects uh, by using the machine learning and deep learning algorithms. So uh, now uh, at the end of the session, I again really thanks to uh, TDRA for giving me the opportunity for delivering this session and also I uh, thanks to participants who have participated in this session. Thanks.